SLT was first approved by the FDA in 2001. Dr. Mark Latina invented SLT. What was great about it was compared to the predecessor of ALT, argon laser trabeculoplasty, there's no thermal damage, there's no scarring, there's no pain. Most of the time, out of thousands of these that we've done, I can only think of a couple of patients that even have said that, that it bothered them or, or that they had a problem with it. It's comparable in efficacy, especially as primary therapy to drop. Probably the most compelling point I give to patients is that it's not permanent. We're not cutting anything. We're not burning anything. You're not going to smell hamburgers while I'm working on it. It stimulates the body's own immune mechanisms to clean up the debris in the gutter, if you will, to clear up the leaves that are blocking the gutters and, and causing the pressure to go up. ALT is a hot laser, a thermal laser, if you will, requires pigment to really have its effect, creates a scar. So you put the laser scar ALT in there, it makes a burn. By scarring, it pulls apart the adjacent spaces and that allows some outflow facility. Unfortunately, long term, it caused inflammatory membranes, caused scarring. In essence, was really just a last ditch before we moved on to a trap. Whereas today, you take the SLT, it's a YAG laser. It's not an argon, so it's a cold laser. The YAG laser has a frequency of 532 nanometers. You're going to do a capsulotomy or a peripheral iridotomy working at 532 nanometers. But when you use the SLT, they Q switch it or double it to 1064 is the effective wavelength. And by doing that, it allows a much quicker effect. So it selectively targets the pigmented trabecular meshwork without causing structural or coagulative damage. So what are some contraindications to laser trabeculoplasty? Of course, narrow angles. I already mentioned this. If you can't access the angle, it's tough. And, and I'll be honest, even in patients that have open angles, sometimes we do pre-treat uh, the morning of the procedure with pilocarpine just to make sure we're able to fully access any type of inflammatory glaucoma. Probably not what you're looking for. This is going to have an inflammatory response, so might not make sense congenital neovascular glaucoma, angle recession, someone that doesn't actually have glaucoma. And here's what's really important. If you have someone that really needs to pressure down quickly, this does have a fairly fast effect, but it's not going to get it down in an emergency situation. And the second piece to that is that if you have someone that presents with a pressure of 40, don't expect to be able to offer SLT and get to an acceptable IOP. You know it's going to take more than just one drop, one laser. It's probably going to take a combination of laser and eye drop. So uh, this was a big one for me and one that I really try and pay attention to. And that's looking at the visual field before I do a laser. If someone has visual field that looks like this, we have fixation split. The mean deviation is almost 17 decibels. This is someone with advanced severe glaucoma. If you do the SLT and they're an unfortunate patient that has an IOP spike, guess what's going to happen to the rest of this visual field? It, it's gone. I think there's some clinical legal responsibility there. And, and frankly, when you have someone with this degree of glaucoma, laser trabecular plasma is probably not going to get you where you need to be. This is a surgical glaucoma patient, a TRAB, today for me, a tube, maybe a, a Zen gel implant as a stopgap measure, but most of these patients ultimately are going to need a tube. So with uh, ALT, you see that um, this is the trabecular meshwork. For this, you're supposed to have it in the posterior one-third of the pigmented trabecular meshwork. And I always used to tell students, if you can point that out to me, I'll give you five bucks because it's impossible clinically to see it. And that was, you know, of the issues, you really had to have excellent placement. Uh, when you compare SLT and ALT, you can see with ALT, we had to leave all those spaces in between because of the scarring effect, because of the adjacent flow of target. With SLT, we just kind of overlap them. It doesn't have to be in that precise exact part of the trabecular meshwork. We're just kind of overlaying the whole TM. The only thing you really want to avoid is hitting porcillary body. Anything close to the iris is going to hurt the pa patient's going to feel it. It's not necessarily going to result in synechia or inflammation or anything more, but the patient may notice that you're not right on target there. One of the things I like to show with SLT versus ALT on the left here is an ALT crater shot. And you can see this big infrastructural change, a big hole, literally a crater. Whereas on the right side, they've had SLT and you really can't tell any infrastructural changes that have occurred. Before you can really get good at any type of laser procedure, you really have to know where you're looking. And we are looking at their inferior angle. And that means that the mirror that I'm looking through is the super superior mirror. So superior mirror, inferior angle. You can see the iris. You can see the trabecular mesh work. You can see Schlem's canal. Not really much of Schwabi's lines. We're going to do a laser. It's going to be right through here. I love seeing that pigment that tells me they're probably going to have a great response to SLT. But when you think about the angle, keep in mind that the deepest 
part of the angle is going to be the inferior angle. The most shallow angle is going to be the superior angle. Now here's an inferior angle. So we have the lens in the superior component. You notice how there's, this is the same patient, how there's much more pigment in the inferior angle than there was in the superior angle. And the reason is, first of all, gravity, right? Gravity is going to pull a lot of that pigment down. This patient has pigment dispersion being the deepest angle and also the, the gravitational effect tend to see more pigment in beer One of the things I like to talk about with uh, gonioscopy is looking at the ciliary processes. So here's the patient's iris, here's the ciliary body, and then here's the trabecular meshwork. And these little finger-like processes right through here, these are the ciliary processes. And what they do, they start in the ciliary bot body, course over and land on the trabecular meshwork. So if you have a lightly pigmented angle and you're kind of confused about where you are, all you have to do is look for those ciliary processes and it'll save the day. I use them all the time during SLT because sometimes you get an angle like this where it's so dirty with pigment, you can't even tell what's TM and what's not. So sometimes I'll just look for a couple of processes. Like I see one right there, right in that area, another one right there. And as, as long as I can see one of those, I know where I am. I can stay on track, stay in that trabecular meshwork. Here's an example of a patient with pigmentary glaucoma. You can see a lot going on. Here's the iris. Here is the ciliary body. And then here is the TM. And you see all these little finger-like projections that is telling you that this is the TM. A lot of people might be tempted to think this pigmented Sampolesis or line here is, is the TM when in actuality, these trabecular or iris processes show you where the trabecular meshwork is. Sometimes you can get a very light colored uh, trabecular meshwork and a full colored ciliary body. So you really got to pay attention where you are. If you've seen one angle, you've seen one angle. And when I'm doing SLT, I really try and stay focused on where am I? Every application, I stop, I put the laser down, I refocus, am I where I'm supposed to be? I kind of talk my way through it the whole time. If not, you can get lulled into being in the wrong position with the Laser. Two different lenses. This is the Mark Latina lens. As you can see, it has one gonioscopic mirror. Uh, with this, after about 10 to 15 spots, probably about 10 applications, then you got to turn the lens. And it's important to find a ciliary process, a chunk of pigment, something that when you stop and you got to turn the lens, that you don't forget where you left off so you can start back. So I'm always, before I go to rotate that lens, finding a landmark, lining it back up to start back my trail of laser. The other lens has four mirrors on it. Therefore, you really don't have to turn the lens at all. With this, you really just got to do just a micro turn to get the 360 degrees of the angle. So here's a video of some laser here, and you'll see this bright red light there as we get started. There's the TM, probably a couple little ciliary processes there. And, you know, going pretty fast there. I see you don't have to use in that four mirror. See how we had to go up in magnification because the image is smaller. Some of the considerations, when do you use it? Going back to the same discussion we had with the injectable glaucoma medicines, are we using it as initial therapy? I can tell you, based on the study we're getting ready to look at, I strongly offer and recommend SLT as primary therapy, just because I know what it looks like 20 years down the road. And I know the efficacy and how much better it does at managing the glaucoma. But more likely than not, I have more patients on medicine already than I have that I'm starting on medication. So it becomes more of a, if you're tired of taking your drops, let's do this. More often than not, it's usually you need a second or third medication. Instead of that, let's do laser. Okay, overall, 95% of the SL treated eyes were at target at three years. Think about that. 95 out of 100 that received SLT as primary therapy were at target at three years. In that arm, almost 80% were treated without medication, meaning they didn't need a rescue medication. They didn't need retreatment with SLT. So over two thirds, nearly 80%, eight out of 10 patients were there with a single SLT treatment. Cost of therapy, the money saved in the healthcare system for every Every one SLT that was performed, the cost savings over medicine was enough savings to do two additional SLTs on other patients.